Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's a thing to do on the Lord's day to be with the Lord's people. A wonderful, wonderful thing. I welcome you to Webb Baptist Church. If you would please uh, be alert to these announcements. We hope and plan Wednesday night week to begin our Wednesday night suppers. Eloise, does that sound right to you? <laughs> uh, not this Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night, we hope to begin our Wednesday night suppers. So we're beginning slowly but surely to get back all on a uh, schedule that's not controlled by COVID. And we hope soon to begin our Sunday school classes and also to have a church council meeting. Now, you'll be hearing about that a little more later. But uh, again, as, as COVID backs off, it gives us the opportunity to come forward a little bit and some of our responsibilities are here at the church house. Thank you for your faithfulness uh, through all this cold weather and COVID. You've been very, very faithful as a church congregation. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't believe Doris is here today. Does anyone have a Sunday school report? Gladys? Okay. Good. Thank you very much, Addis. And we look forward again to being back on our, our regular Sunday school schedule. And I'm grateful for those who teach. Aaron, thank you for teaching uh, that uh, class of adults. Those of you who work with children and youth, thank you for doing that. All right, uh, Brother Cody, come and lead us as we worship. Good morning, church. I'll make a quick announcement as well. Um, Beginning on uh, March 2nd, um, we want to have begin to have rehearsal, choir rehearsals. So if you're interested in, in joining in, uh, restarting our choir, um, we'll start doing that on March 2nd, which would be a Wednesday night. Um, that'll also help us to get a number together so we can get with Brother Joe and see if we can join them for the Easter cantata. And then we'd like to have March 13th as our first Sunday with the choir again in the choir loft. So uh, if you want to rejoin, if you want to... Get that back going. Um, let me know, and we'll we'll get together and begin to sing together again. Um, I'm going to read Psalm 113 for us, and we'll get into our song service this morning. It says, "Praise the Lord! Praise, O servants of the Lord! Praise the name of the Lord! Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens." Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together this morning and praise the Lord. Hymn number 12, praise him, praise him. Let's sing together. Blessed Redeemer, sing, O oh, earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to come together um, with uh, fellow believers and worship you this morning. Lord, we are here to praise you, to praise your holy name. I pray you would continue with us in this service and that your name would be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue our singing with hymn number 56, To God Be the Glory. Let's sing together. Father, have mercy upon us according to your loving kindness. Blot out our transgressions and cleanse us from sin. We've come here today to praise your name and worship you in spirit and in truth. May our hearts and minds be directed toward you in our worship today. Lord, we confess that we are sinners and we have fallen short in our relationship with you and your son. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit. Forgive us for being mean. Forgive us for not caring. Forgive us for our selfishness. And forgive us of our waywardness. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your watch care. We thank you for bringing healing to many in our fellowship. And we pray that you would especially now be with those who have continued medical appointments and tests and treatments. Thank you, Lord, that you have brought some relief from the COVID epidemic. We would ask for more grace, especially as you protect our children and elderly at this important time in the life of this malady. Our Father, we pray for the needs of our world. We pray for the people of the Ukraine today. We pray that you would protect them from any invasion forces. We pray especially, Lord Jesus, for the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ who lived in Ukraine. Protect them, comfort them, provide for their needs in Christ Jesus is our prayer. We pray also, Lord, for those of our nation who serve in the military to protect us. Protect them today, provide for their need and the needs of their family is our prayer. Our Father, we are grateful for our congregation, our pastor church committee, and those who are willing to give her their time to serve on this committee, give them special discernment at this time, and giftedness 
as they lead us in our search for our pastor. Lord Jesus, we pray this prayer in your loving name, asking that your will would be done in our life and in the life of our church. In Jesus' name, amen. And would you stand with me as we continue to, to sing songs to the Lord together? We're thankful for the Lord and his kindness, his goodness to us. Hymn number 630, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these songs that we're able to sing to you this morning. Uh, we thank you for uh, the great comfort and peace that trusting in you brings. Uh, we thank you for the tough times so that you can prove to us that you hold us in your hand and you've got us covered. Uh, we thank you for the, the goodness and the kindness that you've shown to us. And uh, we thank you for the promise to continue your goodness and kindness to us through the years. Um, I pray you would be with this church as we continue uh, in the service this morning as we study your word. And I pray that we would look to you um, for the truth and for wisdom in life. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, are you up? The kids can go with Brother Aaron this morning. Some fellows have some notes to be passing out now. Uh, thank you guys for doing that for me. Thank you, Brother Cody and Belinda, for leading us in music worship today. Thank you so much. And it's good to see you. Heard a story this week. A uh, fellow was without a job, needed a job real, real bad, and somebody told him that uh, Baptist Church, First Baptist Church, was hiring a janitor. So he needed a job real bad, and he went down and talked to the pastor and uh, gave him his background and uh, told him he was willing to work, didn't mind work, and needed a job real bad and had a good attitude about it. And then the preacher said, well, uh, man, you sound like you're just a guy for us. We'll hire you. And the guy said, preacher, you need to know this about me before you hire me. I can't read or write. And the preacher said, oh, my goodness. said, we've got signs around the church and equipment that has to be operated and if you can't read or write, we, we just have to get somebody else, and I'm sorry. Well, the guy was real disappointed, didn't get the job, and he was going out of the church, and he walked out on the sidewalk, and somebody was selling apples, two for a quarter, and he bought, he had his last quarter, he bought two apples, walked on down the street, and somebody said, I'll give you a quarter for one of those apples. Well, he sold it, went back two more, and soon he had a fruit stand. Well, he went on and working, and soon he got him a grocery store, he had a very prosperous grocery store. And after a period of time, he decided he had to have a bank account. So he went down to the bank and told the lady, I, I, I need to start a bank account. I'm in the grocery business. I've been in the grocery business a long time, and I need a bank account. She said, well, how much do you want to deposit? He said, a million dollars. She said, whoa, you don't need to see me. You need to see the president of the bank. He said, let me take you and talk to him. And so she took him on back to the president and explained. The president said, oh, we're glad to have you. Glad to have you. He said, you sign this paper right here, and uh, we'll, we'll get you started. He said, Mr. Banker, I can't read or write. The banker said, well, man, where would you be if you could read and write? He said, I'd be janitor down there at First Baptist Church. <laughs> so you never know how it's going to come out. I'm glad to see you today. Would you believe Jesus took the time to talk to us about some very personal things in our life that we don't even talk to one another about? In Matthew, the fifth chapter, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks to us about anger, about the matter of anger. And I gave some, I tried to give some personal thought to this this week. Why in the world would Jesus take time, take time to talk to us about anger and to talk to his disciples about anger? Remember now, these are not things you do to get into the kingdom of God. These are things you do because the kingdom of God is in you. When the kingdom of God is within us, it makes a difference in how we live and what we say. And Jesus took the time to talk to his disciples and his fellow his, uh, believers on the matter of anger. And in, and in the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, Matthew, verses 21 to 26, Jesus gives us some very direct words about anger. You have heard that men were told in the past, do not murder. Do not murder because anyone who commits murder will be brought before the judge. But now I tell you, I, by the way, I believe some uh, translations say counsel there. But now I tell you, whoever is angry with his brother will be brought before the judge. 
and whoever calls his brother you good for nothing will be brought before the council. And whoever calls his brother a worthless fool will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. So if you are about to offer your gifts to God at the altar and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar and go at once to make peace with your brother and then come back and offer your gift to God. If a man brings a lawsuit against you and takes you to court, be friendly with him while there is time. Before you get to court, once you are there, he will turn you over to the judge who will hand you over to the police and they'll put you in jail. There you will stay, I tell you, until you pay the last penny of your fine. And these are the words of Jesus. Talking about a very personal thing, about anger. Now the Old Testament has a lot to say about it too and I just picked some verses from Proverbs on the uh, note sheet there. You'll notice Proverbs 14, 17 says, a quick-tempered man acts foolishly. Have you ever known a quick-tempered person to act foolishly? Have you? Now, I've got another question for you. Have you ever acted foolishly with a quick temper? Most of us have. And the book of Proverbs says, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And the book of Proverbs also says, make no friendship with an angry man. And also, in Proverbs 14, 29, he who is impulsive exalts folly, the matter of anger. The Christian life. The Sermon on the Mount does not tell you how to get into heaven. The Sermon on the Mount tells you what happens when heaven gets into you. We get into heaven by asking Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins and save us and turning from our sins, repenting of our sins and following him and his lordship. But, but that is the end of the Christian life. But it's the front end. And Jesus talks to us, his disciples, about how we are to live and live out our Christian life. Anger will blind you and it is contagious. Have you noticed anger is contagious? When I was a child here in Webb in the first grade, there was a little boy who lived here in town who was also in the first grade. The family moved within a year. And he had as bad a temper as any child I've ever known. I don't mean temper tantrums. I'm talking about terrible temper for a child. I'd never run into anything like that and couldn't believe it. Uh, he would even curse his parents. It was just, it was just terrible. And I couldn't imagine how a little child, a little boy, could get in that kind of condition until I met his father and got to know his father some. And you see, anger is contagious. What are we teaching our children when we get anger, angry? Anger releases energy, but it also destroys judgment. It takes away our power to reason when we get angry. Have you ever seen that happen? At one time, there was a guy who played linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. His name was Hollywood Henderson. And it was time for his new contract to come up. And there was a window of about 12 hours where he had to sign the contract. And he got angry with the Dallas Cowboys and with the uh, general manager, Gil Brandt, then. And he got so angry with Gil Brandt that he tore his telephone out of the wall at his house. The Dallas Cowboys intended to sign, give him to sign a new contract with a raise, but they couldn't get in touch with him because he'd torn his telephone out of the wall at the house. And because of that happening, not only did he lose his raise, they also did not sign him again because they couldn't locate him. Anger is contagious. Anger is dangerous. And it destroys judgment. Paul said in Ephesians 4.26, Be angry and sin not. It's all right to be angry, but, but sin not with it. And we'll talk about how that's done. And let not the sun go down on your wrath. Don't nurse your anger. Don't go to bed angry. 
Don't go to bed angry. Uh, Jerry May and I have tried to practice that in our uh, marriage relationship. If we get angry over something, just don't go to bed angry. Talk it out. Uh, don't, don't let your anger ruin a good night's rest or a good night's sleep. Talk it out. Talk about it. And let not the sun go down on your wrath. Now, Jesus gave us some important truths about anger in our text today. And notice what these truths are. Number one, anger can always be traced back to the heart. Anger can always be traced back to the heart. Long before murder is in the hand, murder is in the heart. More and more in our society, we're carrying weapons. We have weapons in our car. We have weapons in our pocket. We have weapons on our side. When I was an uh, interim pastor at uh, Bethlehem a couple of interims ago outside of Headland, Jeremy and I would eat some Sundays at a uh, restaurant there. I think it was Willie Dees' his name. I was there on 431. And two guys would come there to eat on Sunday. Both of them would have a pistol on each hip and a knife in the back. But I'm going to tell you something. I didn't feel any safer. I didn't feel a bit safer because those guys had pistols on. As a matter of fact, I didn't use a sit by them. I usually kind of went to another part of the cafeteria there to sit. Uh, a lot of things happen bad if weapons get too handy. People have a tendency to reach for a weapon, and that's true in traffic. How many of us can, can tell you about circumstances? More Very recently, a New Orleans Saint football player uh, and a man got into an altercation and one was killed uh, because of weapons in the car. It started over a little fender bender, but it ended up Weapons being used and somebody killed. Anger can always be traced back to the heart. Before it's in the hand, it's in the heart. Anger puts the weapon in your hand. We know about road rage. Uh, let's just make sure as Christians we're not part of it. I'm aware that there are people who shout at others driving. Shake their fist at them. But angry, anger is contagious and it's traced back to the heart. Secondly, observation. Jesus said name calling can get you into trouble. He says you may call a guy Raka, and by the way, Raka is it's an intellectual type thing. You're just saying that he's stupid. He doesn't know anything. Or you may call him blockhead. But Jesus said name calling will get you into trouble. Don't get angry with somebody and start calling names. By the way, that's true at home and abroad. Name calling can get you into trouble. Name calling can bring trouble to a marriage. Anger can bring trouble to a marriage. A fellow told a pastor one time, he said, Pastor, I, I know I get angry at home and I know I get angry at my wife and children. I shouldn't do it sometimes. That's my cross. And the preacher said, No, that's your wife's cross. Your anger is causing problems for them. And name calling can get you into trouble. Jesus said, don't do it. Why? Thirdly, anger can cause you to end up in the courthouse. Why? All of it starts in the heart. Then it goes to the hand. Then it goes to name calling. Then it goes to fighting. And then it goes before the judge. Then it can even bring jail. If you read the newspaper or watch the news every day, somebody... Let things get out of control and ended up before the judge. Fourthly, Jesus said anger can interfere with worship. He said when you go to the Lord's house to worship, you need to think back on your relationship with others and if you've got anger in your heart with somebody else, you need to make it right. Now preachers are quick to point out, Jesus said if you bring a gift to the altar, and you remember that somebody's got something against you, go and make that right. But notice he said, leave your gift at the altar. I always remember that. Now, don't quit giving just because you're mad at somebody. Uh, but you need to make it right. You know what anger does? Anger destroys a container. Anger, to, if, if, you, if somebody is angry with you 
That, that, that doesn't hurt you, but it hurts them. And if you let anger take over your feelings and it goes from your heart to your hand and to your name calling, it hurts you more than them. And it affects us when we come to worship. Fifth observation. Anger can always find a home in a bad attitude. We ought to pray to the Lord to give us a good attitude. A good attitude at home, a good attitude at work, a good attitude at worship. Anger can always find a home in a bad attitude. Negative attitude. Someone taught me a long time ago, you'd be better off if you don't complain and you don't criticize and you don't compare, but learn to be content in Jesus Christ. Don't complain. Who likes complainers? Nobody likes belly acres. Don't, be, don't complain. Don't criticize. Don't compare your life to somebody else's. Circumstances are different. But learn to be content in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it'll help our attitude. When we're content and safe in trusting Jesus, it affects our attitude. We have a niece in our family who is a school teacher, teaches math in the Atlanta area. And uh, at a family reunion one year, she was talking to me about it, and I asked her, uh, she teaches math to seventh graders. I said, how's that going? And she said, well, not bad, but she said, let me tell you something that I learned to do with my classes. She said, I tell my classes, she's got a same class with a number of sections. She says, I tell my classes the first day every year, look, I'm going to come to school someday with a bad attitude. Someday I'm just going to be having a bad day. And I want you to give me some slack. But she said, I also tell them this. Some days you're going to come to school and you're going to have a bad attitude. And if you'll come to me before class starts, if you'll come to me and tell me I, I'm just having a bad day today, I'm going to need some help today, I'll cut you some slack. But she said, with that attitude, I've gotten along with them very well. Maybe we need to practice that at home. Our attitude before the first cup of coffee and the attitude after the first cup of coffee may be different. And we may need to cut a little slack in there in the meantime. The sixth observation, action needs to be taken to control anger. We don't just pray about it. We don't just look at it. We don't just study it. We don't just learn about it. We don't just talk about it. Action needs to be taken to control anger. Now, I don't know there would be anybody anywhere around here, around Webb, that would have anger so bad that it would be well known in the community and certain persons, family members usually, would always have to be on the alert to watch out for that person. I have lived in communities where some people's anger was so bad that family members always had to stay on the alert to pull them back from the brink, just to pull them back because they'd just get so angry. And somebody in the family would just have to step up and say, no, it's time to go home or it's, no, 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 it's time. We've got to stop this. Action, action needs to be taken to control anger. What are some actions? First of all, name it. If you're angry, say you're angry. I think it's all right to tell our children we're angry. If we get angry with our children, tell them, hey, I'm angry. I, you've upset me. It's all right. Name it. Also, claim it. It's you. I'm angry. I'm upset. You have caused me to be upset. I think it's all right to tell your spouse that. If you're angry, name it. Okay, I'm upset. Don't pout. Don't go for three days saying nothing. Name it. Claim it. I'm upset. And thirdly, aim it. Why are you upset? Aim it. Aim it at the right issue. Name it, aim it at the right person. I mean, the 
The mailman gets bitten by the dog. The man of the house comes home, the dog bites him, and he doesn't know why. The dog's upset. Amy, why, why, what's the problem? What's going on? Amy, that, that problem. Is there some misunderstanding about facts involved? Is there some misunderstanding about personalities involved? What's the subject here? Aim your anger. And fourthly, tame it. Something can be done about anger. It, things can be cooled off. Things can be cooled down. You can do something about it. You say, well, everybody in my family has got bad temper. Well, you don't have to have. Let this be a teachable moment. Let this be a Holy Spirit teachable moment. Let the Holy Spirit help you to tame your anger. And fifthly, flame it. How, how do you flame anger? Well, a number of ways. Uh, hobbies, walking, jogging, cutting wood. A lot of times some physical activity will help you flame your anger. Don't just keep it pent up. Jesus knew that we'd have anger. Paul knew we'd have anger. Paul said just don't nurse it. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Flame it. Now there's some mature choices I say that you can make when anger comes. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, when anger comes in your marriage, in your home or at work, first of all, don't raise your voice. Don't raise your voice. I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine times when Jesus would have raised his voice in anger. And by the way, he did get angry. The New Testament plainly says, same word, same word that we use, you, you do get angry. And Jesus got angry. Paul got angry. But I can't imagine Jesus ever being out of control in his anger. Not out of control. Secondly, take time to listen. Take time to listen. As a Christian of all people, we need to pray that the Lord would help us to listen to what people are saying, what others are saying. To listen. And thirdly, take a deep breath and think. Think. Uh, Anger can destroy judgment and just take a deep breath and think. My mother tried to teach me some things in this area that were practical. My mother told me, count. If you, if you think you're getting so angry it's going to get out of control, just count. Count off one, two, to ten or something. But just stop and think. Count. Stop. Control it. Tame it. Take a deep breath and think. And fourthly, pray for Holy Spirit guidance. You may have a child or a relative or a friend who has a problem in this area. Pray for Holy Spirit guidance about your own situation, but also about family members and friends. It affects your testimony. It affects your worship. It affects your work. It affects your attitude. Pray for Holy Spirit guidance. And fifthly, wait before you speak. Wait before you speak. I think these are things that can help us handle anger. Now, these are not things that get you into the kingdom of God, but Jesus taught these things over and over and over, not just one time. Over and over and over, he taught this so that our Christian life would be what it was supposed to be. Let's bow our heads, please, in prayer. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let me, let me talk to you just a minute. Is it possible that you're here today and, and you realize that, that you know someone who maybe is having some trouble in this area and you need to pray for them? You need to help them. Maybe someone in your family. You need to help them. Maybe someone at the workplace, but as a Christian, as a disciple of Jesus, you need to help them in this area. Would you pray for our Holy Spirit leadership, that God would help you to control your anger and God would help you to
to have the attitude that you should have, Christian attitude, spirit attitude, so that you might help them. It may be that someone is here today and, and in your home life, uh, there's too much anger, out of control anger, anger held back and anger expressed. Would you pray right now that the Holy Spirit would help you to be the mother or father or husband or wife or child in your home that you need to be to control your attitude and to control your anger? Would you ask the Holy Spirit to help you with that? The Holy Spirit wants to. The Holy Spirit wants to be our guide. The Holy Spirit wants to indwell us, to be faithful in all that we do to the Lord Jesus. Be faithful to him. Our fathers, we've looked at one aspect of the Christian life today. We ask that you would help us to control our emotions. We ask that you would help us to use them for the glory of God. And our Father, even now as we come to a time in this service when we sing a hymn, it's a hymn of affirmation, but it's also a hymn of invitation in our churches to invite people to make a public decision about decisions that have already been made to follow Christ as Savior, our decision to become a part of this Christian fellowship, our decision, or some other reason. With that in mind, I invite you, congregation, to pray now that God will lead us in this hymn that we're going to sing. And I'd also invite you to ask the Lord to help each one of us to make the commitment and decision we need to make. Lord, we pray this prayer today as a congregation. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Brother Cody, come and lead us. Stand, congregation, as we sing. Let's sing together hymn number 508, Love Lifted Me. Love lifted me.